I call the meeting to order. Is the mic on? Yes. Okay. I'm going to call the meeting to order now. It's a minute after 7. And uh, the City of University Heights City Council meeting today is Tuesday, November 12th, 2019. Uh, all of council is present. Uh, first order of business, approval of minutes, October 8th. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes are approved by unanimous consent. Okay, welcome everybody. Nice to see a lot of people here in the public. Would anyone like to speak to the council now? Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Tori Forbes and I live at 536 Mahaska Court. I brought my son Alex here um, and we'd like to address the council regarding Ordinance 201, uh, which is urban chickens. So my family is very interested in um, uh, getting urban chickens. And uh, we were notified that the ordinance has actually expired um, because it expired in May 2019. And it needs to be um, readdressed by the council in order for us to actually uh, go forward and get chickens. So we're really hoping that the council will reconsider and uh, put it on uh, an agenda for a future meeting, maybe in December. We've already signed up for a, a course as required in the ordinance, which um, will actually take place next Tuesday. Um, and so my son Alex really wanted to participate in this process and, uh, and address the council. And so he was hoping he could also say a, a few words about why he's really interested in this ordinance. Hi, Alex. So my one of my best friends has chickens and I went to a sleepover at his house and his chickens were adorable and I really <laughs> like him. And then also, um, I've heard that chickens can really, like, taking care of animals can really help kids, like, develop responsibility and a lot of stuff like that. And we've already picked out names for them. I know we've oh. not confirmed, but we've thought of some pretty funny names. So when, so we're planning on getting Buff Orpingtons. Okay. And when my mom fr first told me this, I thought she said Buff or Binktons. <laughs> so I, asked, I asked what Binktons were, and she didn't know what I was talking about, and now she's decided she's going to name her chicken Binkton. Oh. It's really funny. That's good. What grade are you in, Alex? Sixth grade. I'm actually writing persuasive essays right now in my language arts class. Oh, wow. I, I was thinking about writing it about chickens, and I learned some stuff about them, and... I think it's it's a really good thing for kids to learn where their food comes from, mm -hmm. and chickens can really help with that. Thank well, you. you know, you can uh, uh, have the teacher watch this on TV, <laughs> and she can see how persuasive you are. <laughs> thank you, Alex. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's not on the agenda this month, no. yeah. but... Okay, we'll see if council wants to put it on for next month. Okay, thank you, Tori. Thank you, Alex. Would anyone else like to speak to the council? Are we going to need some more chairs, Mike? Okay, very good. Okay, uh, no one else wants to speak? Okay, we'll go on to uh, Steve Cool is here the city accountant, and he's going to talk about uh, the annual finance report. Go ahead, Steve. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> first item up um, is the uh, resolution to uh, approve fund transfers for the year. A little bit of background information into that. Uh, from the examination from last year, uh, John Olson had a comment that uh, Although the transfers were made, that the council should approve those. All those transfers are transfers from one fund to another for certain legal reasons or whatever. And so, anyway, that's the purpose of this uh, resolution. What we're what we're approving tonight is uh, the transfers that legally have to be made. Um, transfers. Uh, First of all, we had uh, a year ago from this date, there was a resolution to transfer $28,000 uh, a loan from the general fund to the 
TIF fund uh, for seed money for urban renewal projects. Um, second, uh, second phase of this is debt servicing transfers. Uh, under the Code of Iowa, general obligation debt has to be paid out of the debt service fund. Um, we have two bond issues on the 2006 bond for this area here, the OUP bond, uh, about two-thirds of that. Uh, the funding for the repayment is based on uh, special assessments. And special assessments have to de be deposited into a special revenue account. And so the special assessments fund cannot directly make the debt service fund. So we have to make this transfer over. So what we're transferring over is on the 2016 bond, uh, the total principal interest in fees totaled $74,640. The applicable portion of that Approximately two thirds is forty nine thousand one oh five point twenty six. That's item B on the screen there. Uh, the other one is the two thousand eighteen bond, Swisher bond. Uh, but it's uh, funded by multiple sources. I believe the first three years, uh, the repayment is funded either fully or partly by the local option sales tax money, and that was received in several years back um, and that money is sitting in the general fund so that is to approve transferring uh, $13,215.14 to the debt service fund to cover the interest and fees on the 2018 bond paid. So that brings, brings the total to debt service transfers and the TIF project transfers $90,000 $320.40. Uh, so, uh, 1944 is before the council. Is there a motion? I motion to adopt. Okay, motion by Sylvia. Is there a second? Second. Second by Nick. Uh, discussion? Um, Steve, what are we going to do about fund transfer monitoring? Because that was an, an issue that was audited. And um, when I spoke to Treasury about how we monitor these, these uh, fund transfers, there isn't really a method or a software reporting. When I've consulted with other municipalities, they actually use um, software to um, monitor some of these fund transfers. So my question is, from a process uh, standpoint, which is what the audit detected, there is a process issue. What are we going to do going forward for for getting advance council approval for these um, for these fund transfers. Do you have uh, any software on your end from your CPA firm that could assist with this or it's, it, it just depends on you know what the city's financial structure is how many funds they have right yeah like but my question which is what most of the other municipalities uh, have is one, the other munis have analysts who are monitoring this, and they use reporting tools to help them project out. So they're, that's why they're able to get ahead of the issue. So, so my question for us is: General ledgers have actual transfer transfer in accounts. So Some can cities make monthly transfers for that's debt right. servicing? That's right. That's right. Sinking fund requirements. So my question: uh, so, so why don't you and I work on a process for December where we will? have some type of monitoring in place because Olson's comment was we are seeking um, post uh, fund transfer approval from council when it when it's required to be prior so that's that's it's just a timing issue and so that's that's what what needs work and I don't know if it, if the Lori doesn't have any way of monitoring this and I don't know if you have any other way of monitoring this I don't know which which department has the better is better position to take care of this? Um, well, Lori would have the information on that. Mm -hmm. Whenever we do a transfer, we should we should set it up for the process right then. Right. 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 So something to that effect. So we just have to align somebody. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll I'll, I'll we'll pick it up would, and we'll get something for that December. Would be for the two debt service ones, so mm -hmm. you'd have a transfer. Okay. Uh, like December 1st and June 1st for those installment payments. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Okay, any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 It's a resolution. It's a roll call vote. Miller. Aye. Moore. Aye. Maher. Aye. Casada. Aye. aye. Herbold. Aye. Carried. <laughs> okay. Uh, now we'll go to uh, the finance report. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the background of this resolution is the annual financial report required by the state of Iowa. Um, This is the final adjusted books for the year. Um, I'll try to go through this. It's a little bit more cumbersome this year. The state's in the process right now of mm -hmm. combining the streets and the budget and the annual financial reports all into one site for doing all of this. And, and Sorry. so the annual re report for this year is on the new website. Uh, so the report, this is not in the same format it's been in the past, so it, it's similar, but not the same. Uh, I'm not really going to go through this. Yeah, you're going to do the high points here? Pardon? You're going to go through high points of? Right, yeah. Okay, very good. So I'm basically just going to go through the main points on this, where we ended up uh, compared to like the budget and the amended budget and so forth. Um, so anyway, the, the net surplus for the year, um, we ended up with a surplus of $508,684. Um, the budgeted surplus per the amended budget was a little over 413000 so we came out a little bit more ahead than what was projected. Two main reasons for that. Um, when we did the amended budget uh, for the so for the sure. new project, mm -hmm. hotel project down there, uh, we there was some uncertainty on when the building fees were going to be collected, mm -hmm. or the building permit, and it actually uh, came in and was deposited towards the end of June, and there was some uncertainty whether it was going to be in July or August or June, so we left it off of the amended budget and did not have that revenue. So yeah, could you speak a little louder in sure, there so sure. it, the audience can hear you? Thank you. So anyway, when we did the amended budget, we didn't have the uh, building permit for the hotel in there because of the uncertainty when the city was going to get it. So, so we actually have uh, a little over fifty-two thousand dollars, a little over fifty thousand dollars more budget uh, building permits received than budgeted, so we had more revenue budgeted there. Um, from the expense side, uh, last spring with the turnover in the police department, uh, we adjusted down for the amended budget the expected uh, payroll and payroll taxes and benefits and so forth. Um, the actual ended up being a little bit over $30,000 less than what was the amended budget. So those two items there, uh, 50000 for the building permits and 30 something thousand for the uh, less cost in the police department, pretty much was the difference between where we ended up and where we were projecting to be on the amended budget. So overall, everything else came out pretty close to the what we were predicting for the amended budget. Um, few other things I just wanted to point out at the at the end of uh, June of this last summer we had a fund balance uh, we have a fund total fund balance of uh, just a little bit over one million dollars mm -hmm. that's broken down by several funds uh, mm -hmm. some of these I'm just quickly go over the balance the road use tax fund is a little over a hundred and three thousand We've been carrying that balance for quite some time. Uh, the TIF special um, revenue You'll have plan. to turn your microphone sure. when you, because okay. to hear you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. The TIF special revenue fund has a balance of $28,000, and that's the unspent loan money. Uh, the capital projects fund, that's the uh, Swisher Land 
thing. Um, the gross proceeds from the bond sale, the net proceeds, was a little over 550000 uh, the purchase of the land was about 480000 uh, and then we had bond, uh, financial advisor, legal fees, and so forth. And so after that was spent, we still have an unspent balance on the capital projects of, of that project, $38,238. So uh, we have a special balance in the special assessments fund of about $98,500. Um, on the special assessments, some of the some of the um, people are paying multiple assessments rather than over that period of time, whatever that was, ten years, I think, whatever that time period frame for paying those special assessments. Some people are paying all up front, and so we only transfer out of that what's necessary to pay two-thirds of the 2016 bonds so we have some surplus money in the in the special assessments mm -hmm. fund that when we get into the later years as that bond keeps getting paid then we'll be dipping into that balance and eventually that will vanish by the time that 2016 bond is all paid off uh, the general fund balance is um, about 679,300. Three main divisions of that. The unspent local, local option sales tax money, 316,829. Uh, we have the proceeds from the Olive Court. Uh, that was 246,630 which is still in the general fund yet. And then that leaves uh, an unrestricted balance in the general fund of 115838 So overall, at the end of the year, we have new funds that have negative balances. All, all balances have positive funds. I think last year we had Capital Projects Fund last year had a negative balance, and that was only because we had city had to put down the 10% mm -hmm. bid deposit for the land. So, the but uh, otherwise, oh, all right. all the funds are appear to have adequate funding. So, okay, uh, resolution 1945 is before the council. Is there a, a motion, motion adoption? Motion by Sylvia. Is there a second? Any further questions for Steve? Uh, Steve, are we collecting any more um, property taxes on what we projected? Um, it was uh, about five thousand dollars less than the total. About five thousand less than the total amount requested. Okay, good. But this is on cash basis, so you have to remember the county is uh, one month behind. Uh, any other questions? Um, roll call vote. Moore. Aye. Maher. Casada. Aye. Herbold. Aye. Miller. Aye. Carried. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Steve, for coming. Um, the only other comment about the annual financial report tomorrow, I'll get. Oh yeah, we've got to get it. Mm -hmm. And then it will. Filed, published. Yeah, I, it process is different, so I have to create the publication, and that'll be published next week. And then uh, by December first, then we just need to um, send the publication proof and page one off a signed copy of page one of the AFR in, and that will be finally filed. Okay, Chris will work on it, and I'll right. sign it. I'll keep I'll keep you up to date. Well, thank you. When I, need, when I need your signature and everything. Okay, very good. Thank you so much, Steve. If you want to stay, you're welcome to stay. <laughs> but thank you. Uh, we'll go on to uh, streets and sidewalks. Um, Dottie, you had um, Ordinance 241 you wanted to speak right. about again. I also want to comment. Did you all see the press, press citizen this Can morning? You push it down? Iowa City is already on. Iowa City is already on top of the snow removal. Unfortunately, the editor 
called Laverman Steve and not Stan, but other than that, it's pretty Steve. Succinct. Okay, now for our ordinance 241. Troy and I took uh, Steve's ordinance from last meeting and I edited it and uh, Troy uh, proofread it to see if he agreed and he did. So the the ordinance that you now see before you with the edits uh, is the ordinance that I'm asking you to approve. We have included the process. Uh, we've explained that this is the uh, where they're to put the hanger, uh, that this is the only notice that people will receive, and that if they do not remedy it, they'll be... Uh, the snow will be removed and they will be fined. Uh, and if they don't pay the fines, it will be uh, added to the property taxes. So do you have any questions or objections or complaints? And is it clear enough? My opinion on this ordinance change has not changed over the course of the last three meetings. What is your objection? My objection is that if there is a public safety risk, you're adding 24 hours to the process to be able to get those sidewalks cleared. Well, I think we have to deal with reality. And, uh, you know, people aren't going to hop up at 2 in the morning if the snow ends then and start to shovel snow. So um, I thought it was quite, quite practical and quite possible and Troy did also so uh, any other comments from the rest of you or objections that I just think it's fine the way it already is I mean I just don't think we need to you mean the existing ordinance the existing ordinance without <coughs> muddling it up with giving notice and who have we given notice to and well that's I think people know or they should know what they need to do but they don't know see and there are many new people in town new people in Iowa I mean I think it's fine as pol as like an internal council policy to post door hangers and give people notice when possible. I'm just saying I don't want to put it on the city that we are required to sit on our hands for 24 more hours should there be a serious public safety risk like the one that I witnessed last winter. And this is how we do the uh, trimming, tree trimming and trimming near the sidewalk so well, I think so, I mean I there's nothing in the current ordinance that says we never are going to give notice we're just going to spring giant bills on people give give notice if if it's appropriate there are situations like what we saw last winter where it was seriously dangerous I personally witnessed a dozen pedestrians hit the ground I mean I'm not gonna I don't want the city to have to witness that and then say we can't do anything for 24 hours it doesn't say that you can't. It just gives a reasonable time frame. So, and that reasonable time frame is exactly what it makes the process evenly applied to everyone. Mm -hmm. It's not subjective to the eyes of one counselor who may be more sensitive to slip and falls or many other issues. And I think all I, I, what I care most is having a process that is equally applied to all property owners, simply for the one proposition that if the city is to add more sidewalks, you need to have a process that is clear so that expectations are outlined clearly and people can rely on those rules. And yes, I understand the safety hazard issue, and that's why there is private litigation for torts for slip and falls. And that is the responsibility of the property owner. That's why we all carry homeowner's insurance. So the, my point is, if we're going to be a walkable city in the next 5, 10 years, we need to have clear, concise, and applicable rules that are evenly applied. And a 24-hour notice and an opportunity to 
clear up the path or whatever needs to be taken place is fair. Moreover, the ordinance as written provides notice just once. It doesn't repeatedly have the city in a position to do it twice or three times, which removes the burden. So in my opinion, I think if you have, as, as outlined here, you receive a notice and an email, I think that's more than adequate notice to put any property owner that they, they have a problem and they have an opportunity to cure. If not, the city steps in and issues a big bill. So it seems like now we're kind of following this. We just, this ordinance would just obligate us to provide the notice. But we're providing the notice already, correct? No. Well, it provides it's, a framework by which they know how to perform. It's my understanding that we hadn't been, uh, uh, you know, it's been a ad hoc mm -hmm. process. One council comes in, they remember to put the notice. Another council comes in, they forget. No one remembers. I mean, it, it, institutional knowledge is, that's why we need to have it recorded somewhere. That's not a resolution but an actual ordinance so that people know where to go. Right now our city does not provide um, resolutions, like a, a lineup of all of the resolutions that have been passed in any particular uh, fiscal year for the city. And I think that's a shortfall that needs, that's some transparency and disclosure that needs to happen around that. Otherwise people are having to sift through the minutes on all of those uh, resolutions that might have been passed or the council packet, but there's no, so Nick, I see your situation where you might be referring to a resolution, but an ordinance is clearly a superior place to place what the rules of the road are for any member of our community. And if I may jump in, as we discussed, Sylvia, since we have the new website, actually those resolutions will be going online. So yes, in the past we have not had those historically, but mm -hmm. we will with the new website. And they are always available from the city clerk. Yes. So to say that they're not available is not correct. Well, to say that they're not readily available is, is my point. And uh, if somebody's looking at the website at 10 p.m., it's reasonable for them to have access to, to clear, concise instructions on what the expectations are for snow removal. I think they have that right now, or the ordinance says. It's, it's ambiguous. That's why we had that. It's pretty clear. That's why you had Remove the snow pretty clear and, and I, I just wish we could notice people like in the maybe as part of the rental process or, or something that just you know yeah, yeah just if that that's noticed that they're, mm -hmm. put, they're put on notice at that point and so if we have it's, yeah it's in the paperwork like, like people have to like initial that one in particular in the paperwork in yeah. yeah I mean so I just I'm sorry I don't really think there's any excuses for people not knowing that they're supposed to clear their sidewalks we're all grown-ups you have to be a grown-up to buy a house. What does your research indicate on who, uh, I understand Coralville mails out letters and Iowa City, what do they do? Dottie? Are you asking me? I, can, I couldn't hear what you said. What do other municipalities do around notice? Well, Iowa City does what we are recommending. Oh, okay. Recommending, yeah. And it works well. Mm -hmm. So that with every snowfall, it's like a bell rings. And people realize now is the beginning that we have to be alert. And in terms of just in terms of the legal process, I I think you you need to give notice if you're going to act, if you're going to enforce something, so that people have an opportunity to respond, or react. I mean, it would you'd be hard pressed to to make anything stick. Um, and Dottie, to be clear, this is one-time notice, not right. every single one snowfall. I think season. that needs to be cleared up for the room, okay. that this is just, you know, at the first snowfall or whenever. Yeah, it's a hanger that they will hang on the door with this information, that this is the one and only notice and that you have to clean within 24 hours. Uh, or there are consequences, the city will clean and you'll be fined $100. Uh, well, I did see in uh, the chief's report this afternoon that he had uh, one of the officers put notice on people's door. Yeah. Is, that's right, right? Yes, I read that. Correct. So, I mean, he's, he, and, and he's Troy doing that very, now. And Troy, having come from Iowa City, of course, is very much in favor of this process 
and clearly it's very successful or it, it would fall by the wayside because uh, enforcing these things is not easy. I didn't get the impression when I spoke with him that he was in favor of this. He will do what the council decides. I mean, as far as pushing for this, that's not the impression that I got. Yeah, well, it sounds like he's giving those door hangers without the ordinance. It would just be that we we're precluding ourselves from being able to act. That's what he did today. Yes. He ordered that today, is my understanding. I guess I appreciate the work that's been done on this. I would like to talk to Troy and see if, I mean, if he's not thinking this is even needed. Um, I guess I tend to think that, you know, it's kind of like Virginia had said, it's probably a good policy to have in terms of giving people notice if we have the time, but if we need to act quickly. I mean, if the first event of the year is an ICE event like we had, you know, later in the, in the season last year, um, we would be noticing people and then either paying the city would pay for it or we would be waiting 24 hours i, I think is kind of the status of that well <clears throat> i think people need a fair chance and it needs to be uniform that's right and it it has to have limits it's, it's just like any other law that's and, right and you can't enforce it unless you in educate and inform and make it reasonable. I agree with all that. I guess I just tend to think we should just notice everybody at the same time. If we need to do it every year, then we do it every year. But it seems like, I don't know, somewhat arbitrary to have to give you know certain people reminders the first time every year when we could just tell everybody. That's what I was thinking. If it's part of the rental application process, maybe we're going to be doing the... We're, Welcome letter every year for all right. residents. We're we right. It's in. It's in there. I mean, mow your grass, clear your sidewalks. You know, it all is, of that. It in is there. a new, the ordin the other ordinance that we'll be looking at. Says that if the property owner has a rental permit and does not clean the snow per, per this ordinance, um, he is at risk for losing his rental permit which should shape anybody up to get out and take care of the snow. If it doesn't, there are huge consequences. Well, isn't that 242 you're yeah, talking yeah. about? Okay, yeah. this is 241, mm -hmm. right? This is 241 and I think the other, what is it, 242, Steve? Yeah, 242. Okay, so. Can we vote? Uh, is there a motion? For first consideration, where what does council want to do? They want to. You have a second for me because I'm for process and for notice. I don't have a first though. Do you have or to have a, a sponsor? Are you going to well, more consideration? I, I think. I mean, this is the most reasonable thing. So, Dottie, are you motioning ad adoption of this ordinance? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Okay, so you have a proper motion on the, the table. Reading. Of first consideration of ordinance two forty one amending ordinance number eighty two. Concerning removal of snow and ice from sidewalks and requiring certain notice. And there's a second from Sylvia. Correct. Okay, any further discussion? I would just say concisely, I appreciate the work on this. I just wish we could notice everybody one time at the beginning of the year. And then if we have a problem, we can just deal with it and, and get reimbursement for it. Well, you can put it on the website. And you could put flyers around town if you wanted to spend the money. I'm just saying we are, I think we already noticed them through the rental permit process. The welcome well, we all are all, that. but we all aren't rental persons. The welcome letter, I think, goes out. We could. Yeah, it could go out. in the letter of all new tenants or uh, occupants, new <coughs> occupants in, in uh, Iowa City. My final comment is I think this, these edits to the ordinance are in the right direction. They're providing clear expectations and opportunity to cure and I think they promote having a fair distribution and application of the rules and not arbitrary arbitrary application and lastly I think a process like this encourages homeowners who don't have sidewalks now to want to have sidewalks because there is a system in place that's objective and evenly applied and that's it and it's also 
it, it's a bonus to know that another city does something similar to it's this. Very successful in Iowa City, and I would think that would probably be a good omen that mm-hmm. we're on the right track. Iowa City has a large staff, which we do not have. Which makes it we more, have a process. Which makes it, it more relevant. It is fair. It is evenly. Troy long. doesn't think it is, and Troy. Well, Troy is not here to speak for himself, and so. Well, we have a. You know, we have five new staff positions for the PD. I, I don't see how this could not possibly be part of community policing to look after the safety. So I'm comfortable that some of this responsibility would lie think, with the PD. I think it's the right step, uh, the first step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um, we've done nothing. Um, and you'll start to hear people complaining because we've done nothing. And then you'll have incidents like you did the other year where a property owner was passing down the uh, rental, passing down the cost to the tenants and mm-hmm. telling them to clean up. So I, I think we certainly need direction. Mm-hmm. Is council I, ready to vote? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Maher? Yes. Casada? Aye. Herbold? No. Miller? No. Moore? No. Not carried? Okay, now we have first consideration of ordinance number 242, amending ordinance number 110, rental housing code, to provide for suspension of rental permit if snow and ice are not removed after notice. Steve, do you want to address that? Sure. It might go over better. So uh, this ordinance just says that uh, that the failure to remove snow and ice um, pursuant to the city's ordinance uh, that it's not a defense for a, a landowner a property owner to say well it's my tenant's job and our lease it might be the tenant's job and the lease I've, I've told the council earlier that um, I don't think the council the city can prohibit a landlord from passing on that obligation to a tenant but um, but the the city can say that if we assess, we, we can't, the city can't assess the cost of removal on a tenant. The city can only mm-hmm. assess the cost of removal on a, on a landlord. And this ordinance clarifies and just says that if the city assesses the cost, it's not a defense to that assessment uh, if, to say that, you know, it's the tenant's job. Uh, it furthermore, it provides for um, suspension of a permit if, if, if a landlord doesn't if the land if the the uh snow isn't re- removed and and again it says that it's not a defense to say well that's my tenant's job uh, was there a discussion so failure to clear sidewalks for a rental property is already um in our housing code counts as a strike against their rental permit two strikes results in a reduced term rental permit, a third strike within that period means the permit gets revoked. So you're taking a three strike rule for a whole wide list of infractions, not just snow removal, but other things as well, down to a one strike on this one issue. I personally think that's much too harsh. And the first time it gets enforced against somebody, you're going to get a landlord up here saying, poor me, poor me. I was in the hospital. My mother was in the hospital. They're going to have some sad story for you. Council's going to feel bad and say, oh, we're so sorry. We'll take that back. So I don't, I don't see this playing out appropriately down the line. I think we already have a system for this. And, and that system did result in the revocation of a permit last year for a house that, in addition to not clearing their sidewalks, had other things going on. Mm-hmm. This is just for cleaning sidewalks. Yep. And it's for rental, uh, probably rental property owners who fail to monitor their property and then try to slip by. And that has happened over and over and over. And there's no reason in putting this burden on our rental uh, supervisor. He's got enough job work to do. This is something we can handle easily by an ordinance. And again, you know, 
why don't we act? I mean, then you start pointing fingers each way. You know, well, I didn't know, and you know. So if you want to clean the city up, you do it with ordinances. Mm -hmm. You don't do it with wish lists. Again, I don't think the solution here is our ordinance. I think the solution is having a rental inspector that can do consistent enforcement. That's the piece that's missing. It's not the ordinance piece. Mm -hmm. Well, his job will not be getting out every snowstorm and checking. I, we, I've been talking about enforcement a lot too. I think that's, we, we need to do that. I think that will, will help so we're, we're not grasping at the straws trying to change ordinances around. I would say, though, for me, this is a huge public safety issue as opposed to some of the other infractions. So I'm, I'm willing to support this for that reason. Okay. So one infraction. It's suspension. I mean, I think there is maybe some question yeah. about how, how it goes. I think this is, from a safety perspective, is big enough that I would like to get the attention of landlords that Got it, especially with the ice issues that we've had. You know, you got to take this seriously. And we've heard time and time again, people complaining. You know, and you guys about, understand that a suspended rental permit the means the tenants get evicted, that's right? That's right, and that's my that's my concern. Property owners okay. who mm -hmm. don't pay attention, that just take the rent check every month and expect the tenant to handle the whole thing. I I just think it's a no brainer. <clears throat> Is there any further discussion? Uh, so, Dottie, do you motion yes. for? Yes. Second. Okay, motion by Dottie for first consideration of ordinance number 242 and second by Nick. Any further discussion? I just think this is going to be worse for the tenant than it is for the landlord. I think we need to table this until December to get some feedback from tenants and, and see how they feel with 180-day suspension. Right now, we don't have a rental inspector in place. Number two, we don't have enough feedback. I think this is the first time we see this uh, ordinance, and I certainly want to make a fair and balanced um, uh, vote. It wouldn't be a rental inspector's duty. Uh, no, no, but I think we need some feedback on the rental population, our tenants, to see if they're willing to do this. We've heard it here in council. So let me ask you a question, Dottie. What will happen to the tenants, to the renters? What will happen to them? Some of them are students that just moved in and, and say they have a... I have too, but we have to balance those interests out too. So the question is... Yeah, what's the question? The question is, what will happen to the tenants? You, you, you're the author of this. Tell us a little bit more about what happens to the tenants. Well, the, the withdrawal would not have to be precipitous. It could be at the end of the term of that lease or, you know. Something. Is it in the language of your ordinance? I'm sure that it could be added. I mean, that being fair is one thing, but burdening the, the whole city with absentee and errant landlords that are property owners and and rental gurus that that just take the money and and you know we've heard it here over and over uh, well, all of us have heard all sorts of variations so the question is what will happen to the tenants and what does this ordinance say with respect can, to that well, i would just say again i i think it's I'm just fine voting on this, but just to respond to that issue, we've had a lot of people, a lot of houses in this town that have not had or have not had, have not had rental permits. And we, as far as I know, have been pretty reasonable, more than reasonable in terms of moving on that. I don't expect that to change. We've given many opportunities. And so I think this sends the right message I'd like to just vote on it. I, I understand it. Well, this is first consideration also, mm -hmm. and there's th three considerations by council for an ordinance. Yeah, but you have to reread if you're going to add some tenant protections in this ordinance, which I would be right. inclined to, to see. You're going to have to start the rereading. So I'd rather uh, see the reading in December fully 
as as intended with some tenant protections. I think that'll be that'll be a, that I I could put my vote behind that. Um. Dottie, you want to continue with the first consideration? So, you made the motion, and I hear Nick wants to I vote. See, Keep the second. I think we should vote, and um, you know, okay, move on. Let the let the people stand up that don't want that kind of you know supervision, and then they can complain to the citizens when they bring up the fact that that landlord is not. <coughs> So are you agreeing to add tenant protections, a clause in this ordinance? That what? I can't. Are you agreeing to add language to protect tenants? If the snow arrived now and you have a fresh cycle of new tenants that just arrived in August mm -hmm. and the first time they didn't clean up or their landlord failed to clean up or whatever, somebody didn't do the cleanup if and, we're and, and you apply and you apply this ordinance, mm -hmm. the rental permit is suspended for 180 days. Suspension means you cannot operate that property as a rental property. So my question for you is, can you come up with language that you mentioned earlier for tenant protections? I think it's not fair to put the consequences of inaction of a landlord on the tenants. And perhaps that is a better strategy to pursue is removing something like this out of the purview of tenants and onto the permitting issuing process that before a permit is issued in University Heights. It seems reasonable. We, I would so, like to get to well, I'm not done yet. Before what? eight o'clock yeah. when, mm -hmm. when, and you know, can we just take, can we take a vote? Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, we're I'd like to have a vote. Okay, and we have a motion and a second. Uh, roll call vote for 242. Casada? No. Herbold? Aye. Miller? No. Moore? No. Maher? Aye. Not carried. Okay, now I understand that Kevin Sanders and um, David Jackson have to leave here like 8 o'clock. And uh, so I want to move to uh, community protection. And uh, Nick's going to discuss next steps of Citizen Advisory Board. And uh, he wrote a report about it. And I know that the chief also wrote a report. And Kevin Sanders had recommended uh, David Jackson and be I just part really of it. To open the floor up to Kevin if, if we could. Okay, very good. Well, we really can't, the TV can't hear you or see you. <laughs> the cameras don't move very well right now. Until we get a new, thank you so much, Kevin. Um, of course, we've been. Let's take it off, that's fine. You can hold it. But it has to be really close to your mouth is the problem. Testing yeah. one, two. Thank you. Okay. So over the last two months or so, I have been commu in communication with um, T. Kelsey. And we've been talking about uh, working on an implicit bias training, which I spoke with Jody Madeley today. So I want this to be a collaborative effort between the University of Iowa Police Department, Iowa City Police Department, and University Heights. So I actually spoke to, as I said earlier, spoke with Jody Madeley, and we're in the process of coordinating that now. Um, as far as the the board, um, I am going to appoint Dr. David Jackson um, with the approval of the council, and I believe Nick, you have a report, and I just want to want us to kind of feed off each other sure. at this time. Sure. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's. I know one point that you and, and Chief Kelsey had discussed in terms of your involvement versus yeah. you appointing somebody. Yeah. I just appreciate you um, bringing Dr. Jackson here and also making that clear that that's your appointment. Yeah. So what we will be doing then is, what the council needs to do is just, I assume there's not gonna be opposition to your appointment, but it's then you know filling the other positions on the board. 
Um, and so we, I've in various meetings kind of put a sh you know, shout out to getting people to apply um, in talking to the chief, you know, he, I think he would like to see some more applications and he's, um, he's collecting them. And, and what I've put is in my report, I, I believe is a goal I have before the end of my term is to try to get the board put together. So that would be over the next, you know, month or so. I would really like to try to get the board put together. Um, I didn't, you know, and so I think, again, this is a council decision. Um, the way I think the ordinance, ordinance was written is that the council would be making the decision as a whole. Um, so I just appreciate you coming and, and just, uh, and just there, checking in. My so, understanding is, is this right, Kevin, that it's the appointing committee that will decide and you're, you're going to be on it. And the selection then, committee? Yeah, the select, I'm sorry, selection appointing committee. Mm -hmm. You'd be on it. And two council members correct and i thought it would be nick herbold as chair of police he'd be on it and i think it'd be very good to have lisa moore on it because she's going to be continuing with the council in january and the three of you were going to be part of this committee and looking at the applications is that how you understand how it's written Actually, I understood it differently, and that is um, I, I, I don't disagree with Nick that we need to seat um, the board by December. I think that can be accomplished. One of the questions I had to Nick, and Chief Kelsey is not here to tell us, is how many applicants have already submitted a statements of interest? It's my understanding that there are several um, already out there. So, um, and do we I, have names? Do we? That's I think you do. Um, I have... I have seen, uh, at least for council, two. Um, how many are you aware of, Nick, That in addition to those two? I think it was just maybe a couple more. Um, in talking with the chief, he, I think, was a little, when Chief Peterson was here, I think, you know, when you guys were working together, I think he was, Chief Peterson, I think, was looking at himself as having maybe a more central role in it. Mm -hmm. I think Chief Kelsey has been, um, more hesitant to have that central role I'm kind of learning and I think that's it you know, makes his reasoning makes sense he didn't mm -hmm. think that necessarily a board that is kind of be doing the, the function that this board is doing should be mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. in a sense like monitored by, by police that's so, right yeah. he needs to be yeah. independent so yeah. he's been kind of kind of the role he's looking at is he's trying to get you know he's trying to play kind of the uh, administrative role of you know, getting the information on the people and trying to follow up, I, I guess, to get kind of complete applications in a sense. And then I think he would be bringing who he has to us, um, you know, so that we can evaluate those people and make make appointments. Yeah, and and I don't disagree that that's that doing that by December is possible. We're a small community. Historically, we don't have a strong number of applicants for. You know, we're not expecting thirty applicants for this. And the other thing, too, is um, can you tell us a little bit more about what other review board compositions look like in other cities that have them? How large are they? Uh, they um, the majority of the boards, are they exceed five. Mm -hmm. And so anywhere between five or seven, not larger. Um, but the main thing is we want to make sure that the board is diverse. We want to place the emphasis, emphasis on diversity, coming from a diverse background of advocates. Now, I think that one of the NAACP's concerns is I'm not sensing transparency in with the applicants. Mm. And I think that would help us if we know this, because I feel like I have been communicating with Troy Kelsey, but I know that he's had some personal obligations that he's had to attend mm -hmm. to. But I, ha I don't see the communication. And that's what I'm concerned about. I, I just think that we need to meet. And, and talk about how we're gonna get back on the right track because I have to report to the state president and I think there's just some concerns right now that I don't know who the applicants are. I don't know how many and that's that's a concern. Yeah, I think one thing to talk to the chief about too is making sure that anybody who submits information to him is okay with you know mm -hmm. information being shared so mm -hmm. before we do share it. But yeah, at that point I think that makes sense to be transparent. About mm -hmm. Did you see his report? Which came late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because he 
talks about a could you process. could you say that mm -hmm. could you just publicly say what he says in his report because I don't have it with me but Sure, I'll read this paragraph. Although I believe the process should be moved forward quickly, I do not believe the process should be compromised. I strongly believe it should be a fair and transparent process mm -hmm. and one in which all interested UH residents should have the opportunity to be informed of the opportunity, responsibility, and expectations so they might ask to be considered for selection. I am not entirely convinced this has yet occurred. The ordinance does not specify the specific application process or form. I would suggest that be clarified so interested persons could apply, be screened, and interviewed. Mm. Yeah, I think he mentioned, too, maybe putting something on the website, I guess. I don't know if there's any other mm -hmm. way to broadcast this. I mean, like I said, I brought it up at, at, in some meetings. Yeah, Louise brought it up in December. And, you know, as people ask, you know, I've been informing them of what mm -hmm. the responsibilities might be. So, I mean, this shouldn't be any more complicated than the tree board who screens for background mm -hmm. in terms of interest in the tree board and availability and interest in the area. Yeah, it's because a I different than the tree board, I would say. Yeah, because yeah, no, but I in have terms of process and just in terms mm -hmm. of equivalent process, we shouldn't be complicating it. Also, the chief came in, you know, later. You know, Troy came in much later, and he stepped into a process that had started with the Chief Pedersen. Mm -hmm. So that's something to also note. Mm -hmm. So, Kevin, the selection committee is made up of three people, is my understanding. Yes, and I have tampered with the idea. I told Troy, uh, Kelsey, that I would serve on the selection committee if that's I didn't my have answer. another member who had the time to commit to it. And as of today another member said that he would uh, serve on a selection committee as well as Dr. Jackson serving on the board so that really kind of helped me out so I will provide you with the names of well you know Dr. Jackson already but mm -hmm. uh, another member of the NAACP has agreed to be my designee so we're on track as far as our appointees but I think it's very important to sort of expedite the process and I'm open to having um, five to seven members on the board I think that needs to be discussed I mean you've seen the the chief in, in his report saying he's not wanting to necessarily be the one to recruit yes people. if you have any yes. other methods I, I do reach out for, to people in the University Heights that might be interested okay I think that would be very helpful okay I don't know if that's does the city what? have a, a newsletter from for the city website, uh, Lisa? Does the website from CivPro come with a city newsletter? We can put something on the website, but somebody has to write it, come up with mm -hmm. it. I would say Nick should work. I think we ought to put a deadline of... You know, any other interested people, maybe by, I don't know how this committee can meet. Our next meeting is December 10th, and so it'd have to be maybe two weeks more. Okay. Something like that, and then, or I don't know, whatever the committee says, or maybe in a week's time. I mean, uh, I think there's four or five people interested right now. Mm. Do we need to have... Like, do we need to come up with a form for them all for interested parties to fill out real quick so that the information they're submitting is standardized in well, some fashion I think versus that just getting like a personal essay from everyone can that, talk to them? Okay. I mean, we don't have a form, but do you have a form? What, no, what do you think would be preferable? I think you can just ask them. Yeah. I don't interview them. Yeah. I don't think that would be an issue. Okay, I don't. Good. We but can. I think it's a good question. We talked, Troy and I talked about a form. Mm hmm and then said, well, the committee could interview them or even a phone interview or whatever they... Mm -hmm. He provided a link to a... Oh, right there. I, so, so, yeah. he, he sent it so late, I didn't even I, look I at it. it was very late. So. <laughs> and, uh, but he's, he's very busy right now, mm -hmm. so it was fortunate he sent that. Mm -hmm. But uh, so with the selection committee, you can move forward and we'll just give a deadline i mean if we announce it today on you know a deadline of today's november 12th so we say november <laughs> i hate to 
what would what would be I mean we do have four or five members that okay want to but I don't think it's been announced to everyone and I think it's fair that now we're discussing it uh, maybe there's some other people interested mm-hmm. too and so I think maybe a week or ten days would be enough mm-hmm. maybe may I request the um, opinions from the rest of the council members and but I know you know you have to meet <coughs> during the holidays and things and uh i think that just needs to be part I, yeah i mean that just so, we need to see i i think um next idea to seat this review board we're already late in mm-hmm. implementing the ordinance we're super late and um well, i don't think we're super yes we are deep. we're supposed to see so if the we board. announce this give a deadline and then early december no, I mean, that's too late. Say, uh, We've it's got too late for what? Christmas vacations are coming up. Schools are early out. December. We could talk. I about think it ten days. The Nick Friday is nodding his head. Right after Thanksgiving. Right after Thanksgiving is fine. I mean, you're, so that way. Vacations are due Friday, November twenty second. Yeah, make them do the twenty second and interview. That's the end of next week. Yeah, okay. it's pretty okay. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the twenty seconds are due yeah. Friday, November twenty second. 22nd okay. and then Kevin would it be possible for um, Dr. Jackson people, and committee know. members to meet and interview these folks before um, the next meeting on December the 10th well so I think that, that's the goal yeah yeah I think that's the hey, goal of the yeah. committee that I just Nick want to clarify to yeah. the timeline people. yes and okay. make a selection okay, okay. because you know uh, per the ordinance this group has other deliverables to turn in yeah and that we have to stay on time I guess I, I'm curious to know what we need to know from these people yeah. beforehand. Mm-hmm. I mean, aside from name and... I think the selection committee is going to meet, discuss committee. that. And yes. And review uh, the application form or what you need to know there that Troy gives. The and I think... would have some idea of yeah. what they're going to be at. Some applicants have already submitted much of that information. No, many, uh, there aren't many applicants. Uh, but anyway, let's keep on moving with this. And uh, I think, you know, and, it, and you just do the best you can. And if you can't get it done by December 10th, you don't get it done by December 10th. You know, but I'm sure you'll get a good start on it and some direction. So let's. We have the direction and we'll get it done. Okay. I like that attitude. Thank you, Kevin. And who should, is there a specific person? Like, who's the person collecting these? Chief has been. I mean, okay, yeah. so send them well, to the Well, it can go to the city clerk. Usually, okay, yeah. let's applications send to the go to the city clerk. Okay. Uh, but they could contact me or the city clerk. Okay. And I think Troy kind of wanted to stay yeah. away from this, oh, so... No, and that uh, and that's completely understandable, right? And so uh, you just, I'm sure Kevin says we'll get it done. I'm sure you'll get it done. So, uh, do you want to keep on going and talking about your report a little bit? There's really nothing else I need to talk about in my report at this time. Okay, I, mean, I had raised that the issue of the moratorium on rental permits ending right at the beginning of the term for the next January. council January 15th yeah. and so I just I didn't know if this would come up in anybody else's reports but or agenda items but I just want to make sure that we understood that and that the new council had notice of that if we're gonna do anything that we would get that going before next year well I do have something to say about that because uh, at the end of last week I spoke with Terry Gert and uh, he said he's willing to be the administrator of our rental program and I uh, only spoke to him on Friday and I'd like to work out with him and bring more information to the December meeting and if that's okay with the council yeah, that'd be great. Work towards that, okay? Yeah. Well, you have a job description of what it means to be administrator of the program ready as well. 
I think that would be very helpful for the conversation. Okay. Well, I'm going to work out the details. So I'll bring that back for December. Okay, thank you. Uh, we'll go to, uh, let's see, we got to go back to and also, engineer Louise, report. I would be interested in knowing about Terry Gert's outside obligations because part of the problem that we have... You know what? I'm going to work on. on it for next Well, let me just month. explain why. Because if we're talking about snow removal and ice on sidewalks and rental properties, we really need to... Need I to will have, discuss. I will discuss We that. will need to have the attention. Thanks, yeah. I want to yeah. keep moving here. Yeah. Okay, engineer's report. Okay, Josiah, sorry. Maybe we can get this meeting going a little quicker now. Okay. Thank you. I submitted a written report. <laughs> it had a couple items, which I'll touch on briefly. Your MS4 permit, the renewal process, all your public notices have been published and approved and sent back in. The permit's been paid. As I noted last month, the DNR had one addition to your permit, which I included in the written report, and uh, it's it's fine. Um, and uh, I, I'm getting that information to Lisa to put up on the page. Some additional information they wanted on topsoil preservation, which, as I said in the report, doesn't really rep apply to most of the residents in town because everybody's lots less than an acre in size. But, um, attached to my report was a schedule for the Olive Court improvements. Um, and I, I will just bring up a couple quick dates. One is, uh, if you recall from last year, Mid-American Gas has a gas main, old gas main and services on that street that had to be uh, reinstalled. And since um, the project was put on hold until next year, they're going to get started on that uh, later this month. So they'll get their new mains and services into everybody's houses early, which will be very helpful. The other thing I wanted to point out was that um, we applied for uh, funding last year through the uh, Iowa Department of Agriculture Urban Water Quality Program, and there were a number of reports a year ago of that process, and we weren't selected and reasons why, but she contacted us again and said, hey, we're, we don't have many much interest this year. Will you resubmit? So I'll work on getting that up application updated and turned in. That's great news. Good. Thank you. The last item I had was uh, the pavement markings and just, yeah, up on the screen that uh, the last line segments on Melrose were completed uh, mid last week. Okay, thank you. Okay, any questions for Josiah? Okay, very good. Thank you, Josiah. Nice um, two minutes. <laughs> we'll go on to uh, Mayor's report and uh, I just wanted to announce that any resident interested in serving on any city committees, for example, Board of Adjustment, Community Events Committee, the Tree Board, or the Zoning Commission, contact me November, December. Thank you very much. Do you have openings in those positions that the public should be aware of? Yeah, we have openings on all of them because they're all staggered to end at each year. Uh, then the hotel project update, uh, I contacted Greg Stiltner and he said they're not able to attend the meeting tonight, but they will give an end of the year report uh, next month. And construction is continuing. Uh, so now we'll go to legal report. Steve? Thanks. So the first item is resolution number 1936, which approves a form of application and fees for communication technology equipment. Uh, sometimes we've, t we've talked about it as small uh, wireless facilities. Um, I've reported on this several times. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Steve, I just want a clarification. The only thing I was, I was going to say was that... Um, uh, the FCC uh, and the state uh, legislature have really restricted a city's ability to um, restrict mm -hmm. uh, certain facilities, particularly when, um, in the case that we, we expect an application Verizon once they attach these small cell um, uh, antenna to existing mid-American utility pools. So. I have a question regarding the um, application and fees of Resolution 1936, and I just want to make sure that the staff, the city staff time incurred in the process of reviewing and communicating with any of these applicants is charged back to these applicants. Is that? 
it's not part of, uh, I don't think you can do that under the ordinance uh, or under the uh, state law and the FCC order as such. Uh, the fee that is specified, I think, is $500 per five. Yeah, for up to five separate structures. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the attempt. Um, to cover those costs? Yeah. Okay. How, uh, but I, let yeah. me ask, uh, Josiah, how much, how long do you anticipate an estimated review process time for any of these applications, Josiah? The, the time involved? Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to say because we haven't done it before, but I can just tell you in general, anytime you review a permit, it depends on how complete it is and how many times you go back and forth mm -hmm. with it. But... Um, it, it generally involves uh, 8 to 12 hours, probably, between initial and review and coordination and construction and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. follow-up and clean-up. And, mm -hmm. yeah, it's not a, it's not a wow. quick and easy desk yeah. thing, yeah. typically. So the, yeah, so it looks like we're, city's going to be picking up a lot of that uh, uh, fees. Okay. Consideration of resolution number 1936 is before you. Motion adoption. Motion by Virginia. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Lisa. Uh, any further discussion? Roll call vote. Herbold? Aye. Miller? Aye. Moore? Aye. Maher? Aye. Casada? Aye. Carried? Okay. And then, Steve, you can mm -hmm. Thanks. keep on going. Okay. The next item is uh, resolution number 1848. Uh, this is uh, the resolution. 19. Excuse me. Thank you. 1948 that. Um, the resolution that would approve the city uh, making an internal advance, uh, sort of a loan to itself, not unlike the one that you just approved the fund transfer for from last year. Uh, this is so the the OUP TIF, as you may recall, is a, it's called a rebate TIF. So that means no funds flow back to the developer or to anyone else until the funds are first paid by the people that pay taxes, uh, the owners of OUP, not including the city because the city doesn't pay taxes to, on uh, property that it owns. So of the, uh, of the tax dollars collected uh, from OUP owners, commercial and residential, um, then uh, the development agreement with, with uh, the OUP developers provides that the city may uh, rebate, return uh, up to 95% of that um, in, in the form of this rebate TIF. The 95% of it is your next resolution. The 5% of it that remains is the present resolution, 1948. The city uh, council last year um, amended the uh, urban renewal plan to include some particular um, projects, Melrose Streetscape, Melrose uh, Panel Replacement, and Olive Court Reconstruction. And so this, what this uh, resolution does is it it permits it authorizes the treasurer that to move funds from the general fund to those urban renewal project funds and then use the TIF money that will come in starting in 2020 um, to uh, repay the city it's that's what it is okay number 1948 is before you is there a motion I'll motion motion by Lisa second by Dottie okay uh, any further discussion questions yeah, this is uh, the resolution that defunds 100% um, all schooling obligations from the TIF district, and I disagree fundamentally with that. This is not the time to be defunding our schools. Uh, any other discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Miller? Aye. Moore? Aye. Maher? Aye. Posada? No. Herbold? Aye. Carried? So then the next resolution, 1949, is, is uh, called the Annual Appropriation uh, Resolution for the <laughs> OUP TIF. So what this says is that based upon the developer's worksheet, which I sent around to the council, um, you know, the, the developer uh, calculates up the assessed value of property as determined by the Johnson County Assessor, effective January 1, uh, 2019 in this case. And then goes through a formula, there's a rollback, and then uh, comes up with a, uh, uh, a, a number that is multiplied by 95% and, and submits this to the council, which the developer has done. So the, the allocation, uh, the appropriation, I should say, uh, for, for this resolution, it's, it's effective next year because of the way taxes are paid. But the amount of the 677753 
$1,000. As noted in those documents, the, uh, the assessed value of the property is something in excess of $45 million. I think it's fully assessed at this point. Um, and then the resolution also then authorizes uh, the uh, TIF collection of the, the internal appropriation that the council just made by way of its uh, resolution 1948. So that's what 1949 is. Steve, okay. one question for me. Yep. Would being an owner over here, does that, do you think that impacts any, I'm trying to think if there's a conflict of interest mm -hmm. anyway in this. Mm -hmm. You get a benefit. Mm -hmm. well, and you also, you just abstain. Benefit. You recused you yourself your, from the last you one. You pay your tax. Anybody who owns it pays the tax. The, uh, the developer gets the benefit, and you don't. Um, That's why I didn't. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I, mean, I think announcing it. I don't think you have a, a strict conflict of interest that would prohibit you from voting. You know, if you feel you do, obviously that's your decision to make. I but I don't see it from a legal standpoint. I'll just abstain. So 1949 is before you. So moved. Adoption. Motion by Virginia, second by Dottie discussion yeah this is the resolution that um, we have much more information from Johnson County assessors as to the value so initially I want to remind this council that a four million dollar gap was identified in 2014-2015 for which started down this uh, terrible road of handing over all of this amount of money at the expense of residents throughout our city and as more information from Johnson County assessor values are coming out there, this mathematical, um, there's some mathematical issues of, of supporting a gap of four million when this building was assessed after completion, 2.5 million. So I'm really concerned with the new information coming out of Johnson County. And so um, I still continue to not support uh, this TIF allotment and this year for vastly different reasons than the years prior in which I have, I have voted against it. Uh, is there any other discussion? Uh, roll call vote. Moore? Aye. Maher? Aye. Casada? No. Herbold? Same. Miller? Aye. Carried? Okay. Um, you have one more. Okay. Okay, so the last one is somewhat ministerial, but in any event, it authorizes the filing of a report that's required by Iowa law concerning um, various of the, uh, the TIF matters that you've just discussed. Actually, this, this report concerns the calendar year 2019, so it's more of the things you did last year. But it's just the filing of the report to tell the state uh, of Iowa's Department of Management uh, what's going on with the TIF district here in OUP and in University Heights. 1950s before you. Is there a motion? Motion by uh, Dottie. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Lisa. Okay. Uh, discussion. Roll call vote. Maher? Casado? No. Nope. Herbold? Aye. Miller? Aye. Moore? Aye. Carried. Okay. Very good. Uh, any other questions for Steve? Okay. We'll move on to the clerk report. Um, Chris, you have a couple of things, or soon one thing, I'm, maybe. Soon as I'm done writing. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I sent out my updated, um, uh, my clerk report in the updated building and rental permit spreadsheets. Um, in addition, I have two items under my name and I'm trying to find them. Here we go. The first one, consideration of resolution number 1946, I would actually like to defer until the December meeting. Uh, Lori and I need to get together to finalize that. We are updating the names of our um, investment companies, banks, et cetera, that we are working with to have that ready for, um, for the city. The second item is resolution 1947, establishing uh, official city depositories and specifying the maximum amount that may be kept in each deposit. Uh, again, this is something that came up from our city examination, and so I would appreciate your consideration. Motion adoption of 1947. Second. Okay, motion by Virginia and second by Dottie. Uh, discussion? Roll call vote. Sorry. Oh, where are we? Um, um, Casada. Aye. Herbold. Aye. Miller. 
Aye. Moore. Aye. Maher. Aye. Carried. Okay. Is there any other questions for Chris? Okay. The treasurer's report, um, that was circulated by Lori, and uh, she also included the warrants. Um, did everyone get to review them? Um, is there any objection? Actually, no, because they weren't circulated to all of council. At least I didn't receive copies of not just the warrants. Well, maybe but, you can bring it up on the screen. But a number of other documents from tonight's council until later when I found them on the city web page. So there was a either I was completely overlooked in the in the in the circulation of these documents, but um, they're all of them and consistently accept uh, Chris's and uh, Chief Troy Kelsey's report. Those were there wow. along with Steve and Nick's. But so it says to staff, okay. council, and Troy on Lori's email. Okay, then it's probably somewhere else then. Yeah. Is your council? I probably my spam folder. I'll check. So are you gonna? But anyhow, I don't have any issues with the. Uh, I just making okay. a note of this. I did manage to pull them from the website. Okay. Um, so, is there any objection to paying the bills? Uh, hearing none, the bills will be paid by unanimous consent. Uh, are you have any questions for Lori? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, we went through community protection pretty much, I think. Okay, yes, including reading Chief's report, so that's good. So we'll go on to building zoning and sanitation. And our next round of leaf vacuuming will be done by Quality Care starting Monday, November 25th. Hopefully, I who knows what the weather's going to do. <laughs> Vacuuming, it'll probably yeah, be 80 it'll be the last it'll be the last <laughs> round this fall okay uh, I think they finished pretty I think they finished on Thursday you know they didn't start on that Monday and they finished Tuesday Wednesday Thursday so that went better than last year yeah I didn't Don't mind that they were yeah and I didn't mind that they started a day late because a lot of people actually did rake on mon Monday and they would have been missed otherwise. So, okay. We'll see what the weather does. Yeah. That's all I got. Okay. So now we'll go to finance committee. And Sylvia, you had first consideration of ordinance number 244. Um, that's right. And it's my understanding late in the evening that you contacted um, the representative, Lechen Rayland, from Chains Interrupted to Council. Yes, I talked and, to her. Hold on. And. And I understand that it's because part of the information is still outstanding, which is part of the what's in the minutes, and that's that's fine. That's not a problem. As as my as my information um, provides, the ordinance hasn't changed. I haven't received any feedback from counselors on what should change or what shouldn't. But we did manage to get information on the Marriott's present policy. So I want to reiterate to this council and to the public that Marriott. It's a corporate prerogative for them to have anti-human traffic, trafficking training. It is nowhere found in our PUD agreements that that level of employee training will take place. My biggest concern is that we have a stadium. It's a sports facility complex. We have a hotel across from it within very close proximity. And there is a risk factor that I think we are well served in preemptively trying to mitigate and manage for two reasons. One, nowhere in the hotel documents does it say that they have to stay with Marriott. If they move away from Marriott, we lose the assurances that there is a corporation that, is, that has an internal policy requiring such training. Number two, it's a policy issue because the legal department, Steve Ballard, has not identified any reasons why this why the city could not adopt and he provided you with that statement at the last meeting and nothing has changed to the best of my knowledge through other communications with steve and as a result it is a forward-looking ordinance to ensure that when this hotel comes in that it is in place 
as I was campaigning this time around, many of the neighbors around that area are still a little bit in a shock that there is a hotel next to them. They didn't realize just how big and, and such a big presence it is. And it also reminded me that part of this converse conversation began with one of our police officers who is no longer here on the force with us. He moved to Dubuque. And his biggest concern from his perspective was exactly this, trafficking. And trafficking under Iowa law pulls in a number of different criminal scenarios, not just the ones that, that Chains Interrupted identified. And as a result, I think that that is a policy issue squarely within the body of council's prerogative to take action. It's not a Sylvia issue. It is an issue of do you want to have a high-performing, quality business district in your city boundaries? And this ordinance moves in that direction. It's consistent with what the Marriott practices are. And should the hotel ever debrand away from Marriott to another brand that does not have this social commitment, your ordinance is already requiring that they look for a substitute um, provider to train. And you heard from Chains Interrupted that they provide this freely and gratuitously to those interested hotels and motels that want this training. I want to say that when I talked to Lynchin today, I told her that I apologized to her. I said, as you know, at the last meeting, and I'm going to read from the minutes here. Uh, first consideration of number 244, mandatory training for the detection and reporting of human trafficking, was deferred to allow Lenshin Rayside, co-founder of Chains Interrupted, time to research model ordinances and meet with city's officials and interested parties. Mm -hmm. I apologize to her that I hadn't contacted her, her after the meeting and got that done by November. I told her that this is what the council wanted to do and that I didn't want her to waste her time coming tonight when we hadn't met. And this is what the council decided. Has anything changed with the council? Do you still want to do that? And I told her, mm -hmm. I don't think December looks that much better, but I think as we move forward, we still have nine, 10 months before the hotel opens mm -hmm. and that this could be addressed as we move forward later on down the road. Sure. And so that's why I didn't have her come. from the Marriott, so it's a and, Marriott. So. And, and part of meeting with uh, city officials and interested parties was uh, probably uh, the police chief, and the hotel developers mm -hmm. and anyone else interested. So I still think we should continue as the council said in October and do that. I just didn't have time to do that this past four weeks. Well, why she couldn't show up and provide with what at least she has information for some of the questions that we're being responsive for, I think that you know, would have been I told her she could come to any meeting she wanted to. The meetings are open. Well, she could come to any of know, the meetings. The I just didn't today, want to waste her time. The Supreme Court today said that they are very, very, very interested in, you know, the citizen, um, you know, the DACA, the DACA students and the DACA people who are who are recipients of that protection and that they're super interested in being helpful. But they're letting the Trump resolution executive order stand and pretty much deporting everybody. So for me, this is a, sh uh, we should have allowed a continuation of this discussion with wh whatever information we had. We know that Troy Kelsey, our chief, has been away for personal matters and celebration matters, right? There was a wedding and there's now a funeral and I'm sorry about that and, and that was part of it. But I think at the end of the day, this council should have moved forward with some information, at least data collecting information. And getting a phone call this late in the day and not having at least me involved, I mean, come on, Louise, it, it just, the perception is, is otherwise. And it looks to me- well, I don't want to discuss perception with you the, at hey, this optics point. optics is everything. So all I can tell I, you is- Was there I'm, anything on the agenda about her 
attending no this is no, good this is good not. enough I reached out to her. So, I didn't know she was planning on coming. You didn't even say it in your report that she was coming. Council requested information at and, the last council uh, meeting. So, anyways, so I think it's fair. want to move on with agenda yes, items from I mean, now on. I'm comfortable letting the next council okay. take this up, too. We don't have time left in this term to do three readings. They're going to have to do a reading on this. The they Marriott can, but there's nothing that this stops this council topic. from beginning the readings. Not of this. Yeah. So I would, Steve wants to comment. So I do want to say that with respect to the the Marriott brand of the hotel, so the development agreement and uh, and the ordinance specifically provide that 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 hotel can only change from being a Marriott based upon a, a four fifths vote of the council. So it's not as though they could change the brand without not just council no notice or council approval, but a, a super majority approval. And I, I wonder too in the contract that that the builders have with Marriott, whether there are any preconditions about what what might be done once they terminate that brand name and go off on their own. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that. But yeah. There's it four fifths majority is is not a guarantee that Marriott will continue. No, just makes not, it it just uh, makes it a little bit more of a point. Let's just go on to the it's next point agenda of item. That okay. if that's the and point that's at e which government. No, I think this is important. That's the point at which this ordinance would matter. Until that happens, this ordinance does not matter at all. It's and not so, it's not that it doesn't matter. It so does. I'm just saying it operates no differently than what they're doing right now. So there it's not Except the city is involved and the city has to do work. No, it doesn't. So I'm just saying there really there's there's a stopgap there that the mayor you still have to do work without it coming to council attention at which point council has a chance to put in a human trafficking ordinance should it so desire and I think so you're a you're making our council a reactive council instead no, of being proactive that, yeah Virginia's right as long as there is an opportunity I just don't like doing things that aren't necessary. Discuss. I'm sorry you don't feel like protecting people okay, as, a, as a moral to imperative. The agenda. That is That's not, not what she said. That That's not what necessary. anybody said. Let's go on to the next agenda oh. item and finish this. Okay, now that's Lisa, your report, Written which was very interesting on all the different people that are interested in University Heights website. Thank you. Are there any questions for Lisa? Yes, there are. There, um, in the course of the last few weeks, a number of people have been complaining that there are broken links, and um, some were concerned that the city invested quite a bit with um, broken links from where? Broken links from old records or old links that they were used to hyperlinking. So well, there, do you not think there would be broken links with a new website? No, but hold on a minute, because some of these people seem to know what they were talking about when it came to website design, and that is what exactly was the obligation of Civic do. Plus? What exactly is the obligation of Civic Plus to restore some of those broken links? Some people opined that in their in their experience that Civic Plus should have had a cleanup process of relinking some of those some of those broken links. Are you so, providing me with the links? I'm asking you. Are you providing it, the links so I can see what I, you're talking about? I don't know. I'll have to go back and ask all of them. There's several residents. I know that your one. campaign material had broken links, but that's not Civic Plus. That's, you know what? We're not talking about me. We're talking about the work you did with City Money, and that is broken links. You're not providing your work me product. A, you're not providing So my question to you is what? What type of work was Civic Plus supposed to do for purposes of restoring? When they transferred over documents, what were they supposed to be restoring along the way? So I can provide, I can go back to all of these people and do, actually, why don't you send out an email asking the public to provide you with feedback on How would I send out an email to the public? I would ask that any citizen who may be watching this, listening to this, reach out to either Lisa or myself with examples. Uh, please Broken send them links. to us directly so that we can look into this and see if maybe it's on their end and it's what they've saved, perhaps an error versus something that has to do with the website. So please contact us via email, give us sure. a call, et cetera. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like I mean, if there a, is something. When you do so, a website overhaul, you, yeah, you have totally different paths and some of those old paths I think are mm -hmm. still out there saved and 
search engines or whatever. I, I don't know exactly. Well, if somebody has, pretty, yeah, if somebody has a document that has a link yeah, in it, I mean, yeah, I it's not. I mean, you, yeah. you have new, a new. It's you know, not something that. No. It's I mean, not directly that. tied to any provider, internet provider. At the university, this happens all the time. We just need people to tell us if they have something. It's either on their end sure. of what they've saved for a link or it's something that we need to address. Personally, I would like to hear this from citizens so that we have examples. Yeah. And personally, I will go ahead and collect them too. So if they don't feel comfortable reaching out to either of you, I will go ahead and pass them. I would hope that they would feel comfortable reaching out to the clerk because we just want to provide good information. I do too. That's why I'm raising the issue. Well, I appreciate you raising it, and I would like them to reach out to us because we've been working yeah, on the I website. Send you all the stuff for like Christmas pickup and all that stuff. The marriage uh, schedule. Yes. Okay. It's great. On. Thank you. Do you have anything I, else? It will be on there. So. Do you have anything else, Lisa? No. I do. Okay. Not. Thank you. Uh, is there any objection to adjournment? Hearing none, the meeting's adjourned by unanimous consent. Thank you very much. We'll see you on December 10th.